So you performed in Cuba, bro. Oh yeah, I'm Whoa. the first American R&B artist to perform in Cuba. First of all, how the f how did that happen, bro? Like you can't even go to Cuba legally, bro. How did you? Do uh, 2017. <laughs> how did that happen, man? 2017, the Cuban rap agency invited me to come perform at their 50th anniversary for hip hop music in Cuba. Okay. So you man. have to keep in mind, Cuba is maybe about 50 50 years behind us as, as okay. far as like when it comes to like what's trending. Mm -hmm. Like back in Cuba, they still got cars from the 1960s. Right, right. Dri driving around, mm -hmm. like as far as the music, they're listening to like Biggie and Tupac still, mm. like mm -hmm. boom bap rap. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? That's what they're listening to. Wow. And it was very exciting to bring them something new. Yeah. It was like they never really heard what I, you know, what I bring to the table. Right. Like here in the, in, a, in, a, in the states, I haven't really heard trap soul type, you know, trap music before. Right. right so right. like I brought that to them. I recorded a few of my, I mean, I performed a few of my songs. They were mm -hmm. like. What the heck? <laughs> like I don't, like I can't. We I had a translator, like my okay. my tour guide. Yeah, like, he was translating. They were like, yo, they were like just shocked what they just right. heard. You know? <laughs> they were like, so, what is this? And like, I still I have a few of them, like that 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 have access to social media mm -hmm. that like still follow me to this day and DM yeah. me, you know. So I've been to I've been to a few islands. I've never been to Cuba. Mm -hmm. And you say it's they're like 50 years behind. Was it like a culture shock? Because I've been like Puerto Rico, kind of, and I would think it's something similar, but I don't really know. Uh, the people are great uh -huh. there, um, but as far as Cuba, like we have, you have old Havana and new Havana. Okay. Old Havana is like, like more like a third world country, mm. and new Havana is like it's more modernized. Okay. So the old Havana was kind of a culture shock, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, overall, it, it was a great experience. You yeah. Know? It was a great experience. I got the best of both worlds. You know? Yeah. So, you also did a track with Sada Baby, another Detroit, oh, yeah, yeah, Detroit yeah. artist. How did shout that come Sada about? Baby. Yeah, shout out Sada um, Baby. What was that like? So, his engineer, mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm very cool with. Um, I was working on my 222 EP at the time, right. mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? I haven't really had any big features, mm -hmm. so I'm like, you know what? Let me reach out. To to my guy, um, shout out to Dre Studio, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, back in Detroit, he got big stuff going on. Um, but he just he just made the link between us, you know. I flew out there, it was in spring 2021. Mm -hmm. We made the record, I already had the record previously recorded on my end. Okay, gotcha. He knocked his verse out within like five minutes. Right. Yeah, he came with it, he came a little different. Like, I'm not used to hearing Sada Baby right. kind of talk about some of the stuff that he right. was talking about. Like so, he he still stayed true to true to himself on the record, like right. you know his his you know, his cool yeah. you know known flow, mm -hmm. but he just put it on a on a universal like pop song the record, you know. Yeah, so that's kind of that spirit of Detroit kind of sticking together and exactly. making you know exactly. kind of making it bigger than what it is, mm -hmm. and you know what Detroit Detroit rap is hilarious, man. <laughs> you got some you got some of these guys. Is uh, BF, is the name? BF the Pac Man, is that his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, yeah, he yeah, comes yeah. with like some comedy, but he's still he sitting bars, from, though. He from Flint, Lansing. Lansing, oh, okay. Lansing, yeah, yeah. He's from Lansing, but he he coming with bars, but he making right. it funny. Like, I think, yeah. I, I, you know, I kind of like that. Him and uh, YNJ. Okay, yeah. Y and J. I think he's from Flint or somewhere, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, that's dope. Mm -hmm. So you, I can't believe you did this to me, man. You came here with a big ass chain. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> blinged out. I got my little. Uh, uh, no, bro. But you got a big ass charm, a big yeah. ass chain that until says. Until now. Until now. Well, tell me what. Tell me about until now. It's my, man. Uh, until now is my brand, my movement. Like okay. pretty much, like the meaning of until now is like it's like a phrase. It's like everything negative or bad has happened to you or to me mm -hmm. until now. It's like a turning point. Okay. And then, like, if you see here, it's a triangle. It's like an open triangle. Right. And the the symbol, the, I mean, the triangle symbolizes change. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can expect merchandise coming out with mm -hmm. the album. Mm -hmm. um, I eventually, my main goal with, with the brand is to, turn, is to turn it into a label. Okay, okay. Like, yeah. I want to sign artists under me once I get myself fully established. You know? Right, right. So... <clears throat> You went to you went to uh, Morehouse for a business administration, business marketing. Business marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that kind of you using that education in what you're doing now? Yeah, um, I didn't really get 
to like go too much into my to yeah. my uh, into my major because like I was still in the prerequisite part. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I learned a little bit about marketing. Mm-hmm. A lot of it, a lot of it is just like pretty much just studying like what I've seen what other artists do. You know, right, right, you right. Know, following the blueprint. Gotcha, gotcha. 